Hi, it's Deacon Jim here, and I'll be with you today for a few moments. I'm here at my house in Bel Air, been here for about six weeks, probably like many of you. Uh, I'm in our dining room here, and right next to me is a little uh, prayer area that uh, Marcy and I use quite a bit, uh, and we'll say our prayers here. Uh, we'll pray the rosary here. We have a statue of Mary, a cross, some flowers. It's just a nice, uh, peaceful area for our prayers. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to show you what I've got here is a, a rosary, and this is actually my grandmother's rosary. It's really old, and it's really fragile, barely staying together here. But I want to tell you a little story about this rosary today. I was down in Florida uh, in early February, and I was visiting my brother down there who lives there, and my sister came from Michigan. So the three of us with our spouses were down there for a couple days. So my brother, the youngest of our group, he has all the uh, old pictures of our family, and he has uh, some of the different objects from their lives uh, that he kept. So we brought him out and we started looking at everything in the pictures. One of the items brought out was this rosary. And it was my grandmother's, and he said, well, Jim, why don't you take it? I've got so many things here. So I thought that was really neat. So I brought the rosary back here uh, to Bel Air. And my grandmother, just to say a couple things about her, just a wonderful woman. She lived till she was 92, uh, just a kind, caring woman. And she was such a force uh, in my life and my brother and sister's life, just always kind of watching out for us and, uh, just being so nice to us. Uh, she was a widow for 50 years. Do you believe that? 50 years. But she never complained. She just kept going forward. And the thing I remember the most about her was her faith. It was so strong. Always praying, always praying a rosary, going to church all the time. She never wavered in that faith, even though she was without her spouse for all those years. So my grandmother was just very special to me. So to have this rosary, it was just, just such a neat thing. So when I got home from Florida, I had the rosary in the house and I took it out and it, 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 it's fallen apart at this point. I mean, it was breaking and I'm like, oh my, what should I do? So I went into the backyard and I decided I would bury the rosary. And that's what you do with certain holy objects like that. You just put them back into the earth, kind of like God's earth. So I went in the backyard, and we have a rose bush back there and a statue of Mary, and I dug a hole. Uh, it might have been maybe this big, and I put the rosary in there, and, and I blessed it and covered it up, and I said, okay, there it is. It's safe. We're good. So it was about, I don't know, two days later maybe, I go back out there, and I'm walking around, and I look down, and the rosary is not in the earth anymore. It's up above the earth and it's now sitting in front of the statue of Mary, just, just lying there. And I look down and I'm like, oh boy, how did this happen? What I do know is that I did not dig it up and no one in this house went in there and would dig that up. No one would even know it's there. What I do know too is that when I bent down and went to go pick it up, and I brought it back up, I had a sensation inside of me, uh, and I felt like it was from God, and he was saying to me, I want you to pray your grandmother's rosary. So that was, a, that was a holy moment for me, a big one. So I brought it back in the house, I washed it off, I cleaned it off, I kind of put it back together where it was falling apart, so it sits right here now. So when Marcy and I say the rosary here, we will go around each bead, and, and I just touch the bead. I don't pick it up much, and I just touch it as we pray each decade. And when we do that, usually each decade, we're praying for situations. You know, maybe someone who has the coronavirus that we know personally, we would offer that for them. Or maybe the next, next decade's for our president and our governor as they make decisions. Third decade maybe is for the first responders, the nurses, the doctors those truck drivers out there, the people at the grocery store. So we, we offer all that up as we pray this rosary. And it's become so important for us to do that. 
today, Tuesday, and yesterday, Monday, if you're following the readings, you'll see that uh, the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles is about St. Stephen. And as you know, St. Stephen was our first martyr. He was also one of our first deacons. So Stephen is special to me, obviously. But when you read those readings, you see that Stephen stood up for his faith. That was the biggest thing he did. He just stood up and preached. And what did they do? They dragged him out of town and they stoned him. We know that. And that's why he was our first martyr. But he, but he stood up for our faith. So what a model for us today. We're going through just a terrible time right now. Just, just ter This virus is terrible. There's nothing good about the virus. It's bad and it's evil. It's killing people. It's havoc on our lives, havoc on our economy, so many things about it. But I really feel like it is such an opportunity to stand up for our faith right now. What a great time to do this. And one of the biggest things that we can do is our prayer life. I know myself, I'm elderly, I can't go anywhere, but I sure have time to pray now more. So we do that. We spend more time in prayer lifting people up. Um, we also can do other things, action items, right? We can call people, call our elderly people that we know, call people we're worried about, see how they're doing. Zooming people has become a rage, and we're all doing that, getting together with family, and we can see how everybody's doing. And the other thing is we can bring some food, if you can, if you can afford it, some canned food, some non-perishable, and bring it out to the mission. There's just a couple boxes out there. Marcy and I went out there this week. We just went out there, stopped in, had our masks on, got out of the car, put the stuff in the boxes, washed our hands, you know, with disinfectant, and got back in the car. There's so much need for the homeless right now and those who need food in Hartford County. So there's so much we can do to stand up for our faith. It's kind of interesting. Our church is shuttered right now, right? We can't get in that building. But then when you think about it, the church is not just building. It's us. It's each of us together, you know. It's each of us doing things together. That's what church is all about. So we can still be church by praying, by calling people and doing things. And when we do that, if you think about it, what we're doing is we're loving. So the virus can shutter our church but it can't shudder our love. Jesus came down, died for us, and showed us what true love was. That love cannot be stopped by this virus right now. So that's what we're called to do. And then this can be one of our greatest times of showing our faith. I want to thank you for being with me for these few minutes today. I want you to please be safe out there, but keep your faith strong right now. God bless.